Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Alex and this is Emma. And we were recently scammed when buying our first ever van which we planned to convert to our own home on wheels. In this video we want to share with you our experience, what we learned and answer some of your questions. Things like why did we drive it back? Did we get our <laughs> money back? And also did we report them? For those of you who have been watching for a while, you will know that owning our very own camper van has been a huge dream for us. Over the last few years, we've done a lot of trips with rented vans, but it's just not the same as having the freedom of your own van. So in the summer of 2020, during lockdown, we announced our decision to take the plunge and buy our very own van to convert. For the past six months, we have been saving and searching constantly <sighs> across the interweb <laughs> for a van and we thought that we'd finally found it. It was a beautiful green Volkswagen T4 with a fresh MOT and service. We couldn't wait to start getting it converted and when we brought it home we showed it off to you guys and a few people in the comments said that we should go and get it independently checked. So we did. We have zero experience with mechanics or even buying cars in the UK, so this was a first for us. And we did actually expect to have to invest a little bit more money into it to make it absolutely perfect for us, but we were not expecting what actually happened. We were expecting to probably put 500 to 1,000 pounds into kind of restoring what in theory should be like a little bit of work, but it actually turned out it was gonna cost us more than the whole van itself was to buy. The mechanics found a really long list of things that the car should have failed its MOT on, but it didn't, meaning that the MOT that it had was not carried out properly. An MOT, for those of you who aren't from the UK, is basically a yearly inspection that is required by the government to prove a car's safety, roadworthiness, and exhaust emissions. So it's kind of a big deal, and being unashamedly newbies, <laughs> <laughs> in the car world, mm. we thought that by purchasing a van with a MOT and a service that it would be roadworthy and safe. <laughs> Turns out we were completely wrong and the MOT means nothing. So what have the stupid little beans learned from this? <laughs> Well, firstly, we've learned that regardless of whether you're buying privately from a dealer, whether it comes with an MOT, doesn't come with an MOT, get it checked out independently by a garage, preferably before you pay for it. It might be painstakingly obvious to a number of you and we'll hold our hands up and just say, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is, as the car salesman says. <laughs> Another thing that we found out was that as a consumer in the UK, you do actually have some statutory rights when buying from a dealer as per the Consumer Right Acts of 2015. <laughs> <laughs> if we had have gone with a private seller, which is why we chose to go through a dealer, luckily, yeah. uh, we would have been screwed and had no right to our money back. But luckily, the Act states that the car must be of satisfactory quality, fit for purpose, and as described, taking into account the age and mileage, and you are entitled to a full refund within 30 days of purchase. So the real lesson here for you is if you're going to buy something in the UK, go to a dealer. It doesn't matter how bad it is, you've got 30 days to return it. We've learned nothing. No lesson needed to be learned. We always get paid back on our scams. That's how scammed we get. We get scammed so well that we get our money back every time. Well, yeah. <laughs> so in the last video, when we took you guys to the dealer with us to return the van and sort of did a bit of undercover filming there, you will have noticed that he was offering the refund. So we got the refund there, but it didn't clear straight away. So for about four or five days, we were ourselves. Yeah, so what, <laughs> when we released that video, they put through a refund, but it wasn't in our account. We actually waited outside of the dealership for quite a while, seeing if it would come through, yeah. spoke to our bank. They said it would take days, um, but now we can confirm that we have the money. Yes, it has <sighs> been fully refunded and is in our account. And we're ready to get hurt again. <laughs> Anyone at home who wants our money, we're willing to give it to you, apparently. <laughs> if you haven't seen the video, I highly recommend going back and checking out, especially the bit where we go undercover and um, try to return the van. Yeah. I think it makes for pretty interesting viewing. We will leave a link in the description below for that if you haven't already seen it. With this video, it has got a lot of views in a very short space of time, so we have had a lot of comments. So many, and it's been impossible to reply to them all. 
Um, so we thought we'd try to address a bunch of the most common ones that are being thrown our way. <laughs> First off, you guys really do not like used car salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> and now we don't either. But know, because before we just loved them. Like, we never bought one, but we just loved them. And we've only ever heard great things. Well, no one likes used car salesmen. I've had an experience. With I just one don't before. like to tarnish people with the same brush. But then they That's go and true. be the most stereotypical used car salesman that they could possibly be. They're not helping. Many of you have said in the comments, "Why did you not get it inspected before you bought it?" Slash, you should have got it checked by a mechanic before. We know. We know. We made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so. Before we bought it, we checked online the MOT history. For anyone looking to buy cars, you can search the registration plate on the government website. You can see where it's failed in the past and what it needs doing. So we looked at it and you can see here like all the advisories. Obviously there's a lot. Uh, and we actually got worried before buying it and we asked for second opinions. Uh, we also checked on other vans and they had a similar kind of MOT history. Yeah. Okay, clearly now we're looking at the wrong kind of vehicles. but. <laughs> It wasn't the only one and we didn't realise. Yeah, and also with the advisories on MOTs, when they don't come up again in the next one, it's pretty safe to assume, you would think, that they have been addressed and actually fixed. I guess that didn't happen. So when we went to go and check it out the first time, we were aware of these things. Okay, never trust a used car salesman, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We asked him the questions about all these things. Yeah. And he lied point blank to our face. Yeah. Of course, okay, they're going to try and sell it to you. But there's a difference between like, okay, just like looking over some small details yeah, and over. lying and saying that there's nothing wrong with the rust under the car. We asked. Mm -hmm. We even had a little look and um, we have no idea what we're looking at. But we did stupidly take it at face value, mm -hmm. thinking that he would be lying a little bit and we would have to pay about five hundred to a thousand into the car to get it a, you know, a bit better yeah not that it was rotten to the core yeah and like for two people who don't really know that much about cars having a past a freshly passed mot and service plus the car salesman literally answering our questions about the car that we had worries about mm -hmm to a point that we thought it was satisfactory yeah. like those two things together for newbies in the car buying realm this seemed good for us but also they like we asked things like did it have a new cam belt and, like because we did the research beforehand yeah we did <laughs> and still got screwed yeah. he then put in a new cam belt for us well he said he did yeah Who we knows? don't know if he did but, <laughs> but the things that we asked they addressed and they did mm -hmm. and they had good reviews online yeah and a lot of people said like we should have got under the van ourselves I think you underestimate how little we actually know about cars I would have been like oh look all those holes cool <laughs> I would have said, oh, is there a problem with all these holes? And he would have gone, no, no it's fine. <laughs> like he did with all the other problems. And I would have gone, yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> a lot of you said as well that we should have taken a friend who was a mechanic. One, we have no friends. <laughs> I, I appreciate that you think that we would be pop. No. <laughs> Two, in the UK at least, there's this pandemic thing going on and you just can't grab your mate and go off car shopping. I, I don't think that that is a possibility. Okay, we could have paid a mechanic. True. But this, that doesn't matter. <laughs> but I guess going forward, what we can take from that is when it's not a pandemic going on, make that's friends. what we should do. Make friends. Make friends. Make car mechanic friends. Lots of people know. have been telling us to make car mechanic friends. And I like this idea of just like <laughs> making friends with people now solely because of their profession <laughs> and just using them as a mate. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone wants to be friends. Leave it in the comments. We've got a space open. <laughs> The next very common question is, did we report them? And why didn't we name and shame them? First and foremost, we wanted to get our money back. That was our main aim. When we went there on that day, it was, okay, go in there, don't talk too much, just be quiet and get our money back. Yeah, once the refund had gone through, then we could worry about all the other stuff, mm -hmm. but we just didn't want to do anything to affect that refund initially. For us, to be quite honest, we weren't sure what we would be allowed to show in the video if we were to go forward with reporting them. So we didn't want to jeopardize any potential court cases or anything like that. So we just thought it's probably better just to not show who they are so as to not cause any trouble for now. I've always wanted to release the beans <laughs> when a company has screwed me over and send you guys all out to go and destroy that company. Fly, my pretties. Fly! 
way. But actually, this is the real chance we had to do it. And actually, we thought, I don't know if we want to have that power. Once you've let the genie out of the bottle, you can't undo it. And no. we had no idea how well this video was going to do. Um, it's doing very well. And in turn, they would have very much known about it if we'd have called them out. Yeah. Um, and you can't undo that. So like once it's done, it's done. And it's one of those things like we kind of just decided on the day to, to film and release that video. It wasn't something that we planned for ages. So we didn't want to make any rash decisions with something that could potentially come back and bite us in the ass. To be honest, we don't want to be judge or jury in this. Like we don't know what went on. Like all we have is our crappy experience. That's kind of the job of the law to sort that out. Not Luckily, ours. the things in place in the UK are there yeah. so that they can have their comeuppance without us going and sort of destroying them in that way. Yeah. But then on the other hand, I actually feel quite bad and think, well, if I had a really bad meal from a restaurant, mm -hmm. I would rip into them and I would call them out. This was something that could have killed us <laughs> and I don't want anyone to buy from them. But then also, what are the chances that they're going to have legal action against them at a restaurant? Probably not yeah. so much, whereas this is like, the, you yeah. might actually want to hold back some of that information for that reason. So basically to confirm, we are going through with reporting them and there should be something done, basically. That's yeah. all we can say. Yeah. Another thing that we had in the back of our minds is that we know people who've had similar situations to this and following reporting them and making them aware that they're reporting them, they have had horrible experiences with threats and all kinds of things. So I guess the kind of person who's going to sell you a death trap probably isn't the nicest kind of person to be dealing with anyway. we would rather just let the law do its job. The next question is probably more of a different, more of a serious one is yeah. why did we drive it back yeah. once we found out that it was a death trap? Mm -hmm. Why did we get back in it? And I mean, to be honest, we didn't really think at the time. It was kind of like, oh crap, we've got to take this back and get our refund. So we didn't really think much. Well, you about say we it. didn't think. We like that makes it sound like really stupid on our part. For example, in the mechanics when we're getting it checked, Emma said, hmm. "I don't want to drive it back," and there was no objections about taking it back. Like we were able to leave. So when. No one's saying like, okay, no, you, know, you shouldn't do this. I don't know the rules. It has an MOT and I have insurance on it and stuff. I've since learned that that was probably invalidated. Um, it sucks to admit that you're being stupid and wrong, but we just don't know. Yeah, we don't know. And um, I guess like, what did we do? We, we took it back. We drove super slow. We avoided all the main roads and motorways. We, we went with my dad who like sort of hung behind the car. So if we had any problems, like he was there sort of as a buffer to protect yeah. Traffic and so we, like that. we did what we could, but yeah, perhaps we should have done it differently. Lots of people said we should have got it towed at the expense of the garage. Mm. Um, okay, we are in the business of being scammed, but we're not <laughs> in the business of being scammed with secondhand cars. So we yeah. don't know yeah. our rights in these situation. Next up, one of the really common comments was that we should have known when we saw it with the fresh paint job that they were trying to hide something, basically. And so, yeah, I guess that's just something we've learned from this situation is that going forward and for anyone watching, if you go to look at a secondhand car and it's been freshly painted, be suspicious. I did research before going to buy the van. <laughs> like, it's so annoying because I did all the research beforehand and we still got scammed. <laughs> and one of the things is, yeah, be very wary of the mm. paint, which we were. So I asked, basically, is it to do with the rust? They said no. We and believed them. I know. <laughs> Those honest people. Like, I can't believe that now. So gullible. We just can't believe anyone. No. At any point, because <laughs> the used car salesman lied to us. Now we can't trust anyone. <laughs> Another really common comment was that the dealer and the MOT center were clearly in on it together. We said I mean, before, we don't know. They, they are. They are. But <laughs> there's no reason for the MOT company to pass I a agree. car. I because agree. Because if anything, it would make sense to fail the car because they get to do it again and they get paid again. Like, well, there's yes. no sense. No, it doesn't and make sense. I alluded to that <laughs> in the video where we did the undercover stuff and yeah. it basically sent him on a frenzy of blaming <laughs> the MOT company and throwing them awful. under the bus. Yeah. Um, so Ugh. if they are mates, you probably don't want him as your mate because he's going to throw you under the bus at any yes. opportunity. One of my favourite comments <laughs> that many people say is, why don't you buy new? Buy new. Obviously, that would solve all of your problems if you could just buy new. When we're shopping in the bargain basement of the van world, <laughs> 
and we're buying rusty heaps. <laughs> do you not think we would love just to buy a new van? <laughs> Why do you think we're just buying buy it? <laughs> just buy new, you idiots. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. They just want us to admit that we're poor. Poor millennials right. complaining and whining. And the final comment that really makes me laugh is why did we leave our DSLR camera behind? Yeah, we left it in the van when we went in to go get our refund. And a number of people and have asked noticed. us, calling us idiots for leaving. <laughs> you can't, you can't leave any information out of a YouTube video. Otherwise, people just can't piece it together and they panic. We didn't leave it in there. We just don't live stream every second of the day. So when, when you see that camera being left behind the seat, we went back and picked it up. Well, I mean, the video was released, so that, that gives a bit of a hint. <laughs> from the, the footage from that camera. <laughs> That's it. something else that we have learned from this, is when you have a video do really well on YouTube, that there are so many idiots like us, but they're just idiots in different ways. <laughs> We're all idiots We're in all different idiots ways. We're all idiots together. You're an idiot at something. I just wish everyone could put their hands up and say, I'm an idiot sometimes. Yeah. Instead of trying to save face, we were idiots, we made mistakes. I'm sure you're going to make more mistakes in your life. I'm sure we will too. Yep. Stay tuned for the next scam. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many more comments, like too many more comments about this video, but we have tried to address the most popular ones. So, Especially the more serious ones. Yeah, I think definitely. It's, it's good to at least put our voice on record yeah. and then you can use it to beat us with again. <laughs> So hopefully this has clarified a few things and helped a few people who would be in the same stupid situation that we put ourselves in. Leave in the comments your tips to avoid being scammed. It would be helpful for us as well as everyone And not else. just about vans. Also, like, you know, this is a travel channel, so travel scams, there's enough of them out there. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to be doing another scam video in the future, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll find a way. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for future scam videos and other travel related content. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time and beans out!